Welcome, Robbie. Welcome. Thank you, Nick, for inviting me. Oh, thank you for using the office. <laughs> yeah, it's the office of my dad, so uh, I That's think right. it's perfect perfect for our uh, for our chat. Today. Yeah, indeed, indeed, indeed. So, um, first of all, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Nick Hilson. I'm a Lhasa entrepreneur, and today I'm interviewing Robbie Creighton's uh, in Bruges, and he is one of the best lifestyle entrepreneurs that I know. He can go everywhere he wants. He does, he does what he wants. He likes to go on restaurants. And I have three words about him. It's being consistent, sales, and networking. And that's also the three topics I want to talk about today. Okay. So first of all, the consistent. You are always very busy. Mm -hmm. How do you do it? Um, being consistent? Yeah, being consistent with your schedule. Uh, I think, uh, first of all, everything starts with, with having a goal. I have uh, big goals and, and big dreams, so uh, I need to do like uh, daily methods of operation uh, yeah. to, to hit my goals and to hit my dreams at a, at a certain point. So uh, I think that my schedule uh, is very important in, in, yeah. in that part. I always work with like a weekly schedule and then I work with my daily schedule uh, and I always try to go through 80% of my daily schedule. So let's say I have a to-do list of 10, bullets point, 10 bullet points. Yeah. Um, I really believe that if you uh, reach 80% of your uh, bullet points every single day over a certain period of time, then uh, results will show up 100%. Yeah. Because you can say uh, you need to do uh, all the bullet points, but you need to know we are human. We are no rob not robots yet, so uh, it's it's not always that easy. Uh, so I always say like the eighty twenty rule, probably yeah, you know it. The Pareto Nick. principle. Yeah, yeah, indeed, the Pareto principle. If you do like eighty percent of the things that you're saying over a certain amount of time, then results will show up. Yeah. Uh, what I always see about you is from you going to places, uh, networking, but uh, that's not where you started. You start uh, as a salesman. Indeed. And, and there was an insurance. Was it always an insurance? No, or? my uh, my first job. So uh, maybe I can give a bit background of myself. Um, so back in the days when I was uh, a young guy, my dream was to become a professional soccer player. I was quite talented, but I was a goalkeeper. So uh, and I'm not the biggest, uh, the biggest guy. So at uh, 16, 17 years old, they said to me, like professional soccer, it will, it will be not possible for you. Uh, for me at that time, that was really, really hard to, to yeah. hear because from my f four, fourth or fifth year uh, till 16, 17 years old, soccer was the only thing that I was doing. I was very consistent in playing soccer uh, back in the days. Yeah. So uh, then my dream collapsed and um, I started searching for opportunities that would fit my, uh, fit my personality. And I really noticed that from young Zavon, I had leadership qualities. I also had communi uh, communication yeah, qualities. Yeah, I see that. I see that in our community, uh, with our training community. Indeed. And yeah, you are one of the toppies in our group, yeah. uh, together with Geoffrey and Anthony also. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a few presenting and everything about it. It looks natural. Natural, for yeah. I had that from young age because like in my soccer teams, I was always like the captain of the team, yeah. even when I was like six, seven, eight years old. So uh, after my school, uh, I started doing sales. My for first job was really a job. It was door to door sales. I had a really bad product. Um, I had a, a, a really bad boss. My, my boss was so annoying. Um, but in that job, I noticed a lot of opportunities because I noticed that I would have to go through a lot of no's to get a yes. Um, I also noticed that um, it uh, it was very important to to tra to train my skills um, because I saw a lot of people during like my eight hours or ten hours workday. Yeah, of course. Uh, so it sharpened it sharpened the knife, and that was like for me the start of of everything. Yeah, uh, but you you just told me now uh, you didn't believe in the product. No, I, I, I of your first job, of course. Yeah, of course, uh, it was a really and bad, bad, bad product, really. Yeah. And was then not harder for you to sell it also because uh, with all the things that I know, yeah. uh, you know, I, like you, all, like you, uh, I'm listening 
to audio books you're you're reading books yeah i'm listening to them Indeed. and like uh, one of grant cardone you need to believe your products yeah i'm 100 sure i didn't believe in what was i what was uh, i'm doing back in the days because uh, i was selling like electricity contracts mm -hmm. and i searched on on the internet and it was like one of the most expensive uh, electricity contracts that were available back in the days you had like 52 options and i was selling like number 51 so i knew that i was like giving something bad to people um, but for me back in the days i was thinking about myself because first of all it was my job and i need to earn money and i only earn money when i sold the product yeah um but you, you have 100% uh, a good point because when I came back home every single day, I talked with my mom and I said, uh, this day I sold four or five uh, people on the product and I'm feeling bad with that because they had a better product. I came over, but because I was very communicative, I could sell them even something very bad. But that was like uh, the only uh, the only time and like the only product that I sold that I wasn't believing in 100% because all the things that after my door to door, the mm -hmm. job for me, and like you said, for Grant Cardone, he's always saying the same thing that the product needs to be really good. You yeah. need to believe 100% what you're selling. Yeah, it all may also reminds me to the movie The Wolf of Wall Street, yeah. where Jordan Belfort, uh, also a great guy, yeah. and now that his seminars is uh, one of the greatest salesmen ever, mm -hmm. and even you can sell a product where you even don't believe in, then you are very skilled in it. Yes, indeed. It ten t it's 10 times more powerful if you then have a product that you're believing in, yeah. like the sky is the limit. Yeah. And from there you moved on to another company or? Yes, yeah, so uh, it's quite a funny story. Like at a certain point I was doing the door-to-door the -door sales job like for five or six months. Um, at a certain point I was in front of the door of, a, of an old classmate of mine. Uh, he opened the door and he listened to my story and he said, Robbie, wow, you're doing really good. What you're doing? Do you like it? And then I told him, no, I don't like it because the plan is no. not good. And then he said to me, uh, in my company, I'm working in insurance. We are searching for good, skilled salespeople. Maybe this is something for you. And then I told him, maybe it can be something for me, but I don't have a background in insurance. And then he explained me, look, uh, the company provides training, provides... Uh, uh, a, a traject for new people yeah. so you can learn everything from A to Z within the company uh, and then like let, literally a couple of days after I called my boss and I said I'm done with this I'm going so to you weren't selling there anymore you was being sold eh? yes indeed 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 uh, I was being sold to another better f more flexible job than I was doing yeah. uh, back in the days but I'm very happy that I did the door-to-door -door, uh, sales job because uh, I learned so much uh, in those six months that I was doing that job. It's like the best uh, experience that I had as a starter, of course. Yeah. Okay, nice. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And from where, because we are both in network marketing company. Yes. And from where did you enroll there into it? It was the two friends, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, indeed. So I was working in the insurance company as a self-employed uh, salesperson for like four or five years. And at a certain point, I was working like 70 to 80 hours a week, every single week. I was earning very decent money for a young guy, but I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy because I didn't have any flexibility anymore. I yeah. still played soccer at a lower level, but I had to quit with soccer. I, I couldn't spend time with friends or family anymore because I was always working, working, working. And then a friend of mine um, gave me a call and he said, Robbie, uh, I know that you have some savings because back in the days I was still living at home. Mm -hmm. I was earning good money, so I had some savings. He said, I have something that maybe could be interesting for you. And then like that journey started. Um, I made an appointment with someone uh, who explained a bit more about what was my friend was talking about. And from there on, the ball was uh, starting yeah. to roll. Okay. And also from there, you also grow uh, apparently also more in leadership skills and presentation skills, I'm not mistaken. Yes, indeed. Um, because a previous job, uh, okay, you did a presentation about the products. Yes. Indeed. But now you do, you're giving seminars about entrepreneurship, yes. about selling, about network marketing. 
Indeed. about uh, yeah, be professional. Indeed, yes. Like uh, in the sales job, it was always one on one. Yeah. And then uh, when I started in the network marketing business and and the group was growing, then of course public speaking, uh, training people also yeah. very important. Uh, our skills that of course uh, have to be trained because um, people depend on you especially in the first stages when they enter the company or they yeah, enter the team they depend on you as a leader so it's natural that you need to um, that you need starting with those skill sets as well yeah, yeah okay and yeah we know uh, when you start it's not uh, much later we got to know each other yes I still see you there. Uh, me as well, believe me. <laughs> from a young kid uh, and he's starting traveling everywhere. So yeah. is it possible that uh, when you started the network marketing, you also got more freedom for yourself and be able to travel more and yeah. recreate a lifestyle that's more for you? Yes, 100% sure. Uh, for me, network marketing gave me a lot. It gave me uh, more freedom. It gave me close friendships. Because some of my best friends, like you, uh, yeah. I've met through network marketing. It gave me mentorship because in network marketing, it's possible to learn from very high income uh, mentors. Um, and I think that's the only um, niche or the only profession that it's possible to have like uh, such a close contact with the top yeah. leaders. Then it, give me, it gave me a lot of knowledge. Uh, it sharpened my skills. So if I can give like one advice to young people, like people in their 20s or 30s, or even maybe older people that, that want to take a, a totally different route than they are taking right now, I think network marketing can be a, a very good profession to yeah. start uh, at, of course, in the beginning, uh, on the side. Do it besides your yeah. study, do it besides your uh, job, do it besides your uh, business. Yeah. It's perfect to, to start network marketing. Yeah, every price has a price. And mm. then, like, I also recommend this kind of things. If one, someone would, because we are both started from day one mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur. Yeah. We were self-employed. And it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. We had see, a lot of no's. We had a lot of pitfalls. And I think we can both say, we have more uh, things more than a hundred times to quit it. Yes, indeed. So, uh, but you still went through it and now you have a lifestyle that everyone is looking up onto. Is that also the thing that you attract more people also into the network marketing business? Or because uh, I think, first of all, they always say, make a list eh, for your friends, family. Mm -hmm. I call them and show them the opportunity. Yes. But your list is getting empty. Yes, After a while. indeed. And how did you contact them more people? First of all, maybe I can pick in on the list. I think it's really important to uh, start with the list because um, in my environment, for me, back in the days, it was important that everyone uh, at that point knew what I was doing. I was compared with having a shop. Let's say I open a clothing shop, I do reception. Yeah. Then I also invite all my friends and family but not everyone is going to buy at, yeah. my, at my clothes shop. The same thing in network marketing. I invited everyone just to listen. Some joined, some people didn't join, but they first of all knew what I uh, was doing. And secondly, they can become my ambassadors because maybe they have a friend yeah. that could help me. Second of all, and maybe uh, even more important is in the beginning, you don't have a lot of skills or most people don't have a lot of skills. If they don't have a background in sales like myself, um, then they can sharpen their skills with people they know. Yeah. And that is very important. But after a while, of course, the list goes empty, like you said. And then uh, it's very important that you come outside of your comfort zone and you come outside of your home or you start reaching out to people on social media or you try to connect like I'm doing right now. I try mm -hmm. to connect with as many people as possible. Not to bring them into uh, my group, but just what I've... Uh, learned the last couple of years is to make as many people as possible my friend yeah i try to make every single day two three four new friends yeah and um i try to connect with them phone number wise or uh, social media wise and then they see me traveling they see me having fun they see me having flexibility 
-hmm. a lot of people at a certain point are reaching out to you hey maybe i can do what you are doing and yeah. that's even way more powerful than in the beginning yeah of course out to people then, yeah, then you have you made it the name for yes. people from, from that uh, wow effect yes indeed uh, uh, you went to Romania, uh, if I'm not mistaken, yes, for a bachelor indeed. party. Yes. Uh, you, you, you're planning to go to Dubai yes, this, year, this year as yes. one uh, of your goals? Yes, that was my, one of my main goals this year, to go to well, Dubai. You can still make it happen, yeah, so of we have and the half in of the year. In October, so. October or November, I will book a couple of days in uh, Dubai. It will be awesome. Yeah, 100%. So, yeah. Um, yeah, okay, you talk about making friends every day. Mm -hmm. But uh, I experienced it when you get uh, like become successful as like an a house of glass. Mm -hmm. I found this quote of Steve Harvey. Uh, Steve Harvey, uh, he's a comedian but also motivational speaker. But it's totally true. And every time you get to a ceiling of glass, uh, you need to break through it. Yes, and my experience is I lose people also. Then, yes. if you compare the people you surround you now with with uh, the people you went uh, 10 years ago. Indeed. Is that a big difference right now? Yes, 100% sure. So let's say 80% of my time I spend with people that have the same goals and dreams like myself. Those are all entrepreneurial people, all people that chase freedom, people that chase happiness, real happiness. But I still have, and that that's uh, something that I'm very grateful as well. I still have like 20% of my old friends like people that I know for 10, 15, even 20 years, people who are, who are not that entrepreneurial like myself, but people that support me. Yeah. They always ask, Robbie, how is it going? Robbie, where's your next trip? Robbie, can I do something for you? They really uh, have that, that, um, uh, that, that feeling that... Uh, the if, vibe? Yeah, they, they, they have the vibe that if I'm uh, successful and if I'm happy, they are happy for me. Yeah, uh, I correlate to that, uh, but I also sometimes get frustrated about it because it's not so hard anymore to make millions. Mm -hmm. uh, once, because even a guy who is doing this on TikTok makes millions right now. I know. And you need to have a simple idea, but you also need to try it. And my frustration is about a lot of people. Now I only want to do my job, sitting at home, watching TV and then complain about the bills and work from paycheck to paycheck. I know the feeling, Nick, because for me, that was in my journey, one of the hardest things. If I look back now, let's say to the last seven, eight years, I, I had the same feeling. I was really frustrated. Like I was growing, I was becoming a better person. Financially, I was growing. Mm -hmm. uh, and like I said to my friends, hey, let's come with me. But at a certain point, I've learned that not everyone has the same goals and dreams. Not everyone is... Uh, has the same motivation as yeah. well and some people are just happy with being average yeah and we need to be grateful for people that ha are having a job because i like to travel you like to travel we always book a good hotel but in the hotel someone needs to clean our room yeah, true. someone needs to uh, give us food someone needs to make the food so if those people wouldn't be alive we couldn't do the things that we are doing right now yeah, no, yeah, it's true. At the moment, it's true. Yeah, I also still also believe now with AI is upcoming and will be improved. Uh, those jobs will get lost, and I think the gap between being poor and being rich will become bigger yeah. because the middle class is is getting extinct. Yes, will be gone. I believe that as well. I think that in let's say ten years, middle class will be almost gone or gone at all. Yeah, people will be poor or people will be rich wealthy. Yeah, I also believe that. Yeah, um, but then you need a vehicle to get out of that rat race, because the in the industrial age we are now in the information age, mm -hmm. and in this race they always say, go to school, do your best, get a job for a boss, and climb up the way up to get more income, or change one one or two times and get more income, save your money, buy a house, pay the mortgage, and then after forty fifty years, retire and enjoy your life. But after 40, 50 years, after working so hard, then you are 60, 70, what do you have? Yes, indeed. Um, that's also why I want to do this podcast. Uh, I want to do my book. Uh, I'm also now, my new website will also be coming soon online again. 
Mm -hmm. um, and it's all about this subject. Yes. I'm also still a freelance software developer, but I, I can do it from everywhere. Yes. I have the freedom for location and time. And yeah, I need to put the work. And every price has a price, but the old thing is gone in my eyes. I, I think that you're spot on with what you were saying. Um, I think information really can change your situation because the information that I've received a couple of years ago really changed my situation. Yeah. Um, so I think information is literally the number one key, like for people who are listening or people who are seeing the, the video of this, uh, of this chat. If you're not happy with your situation right now, just search online for someone that, that's in a totally different situation, someone that you really look up to. Try to get in contact with that, uh, with that person or try to look what that person is doing because you can do a lot of things. Like you were saying, you can do IT, you can do trading, you can be an investor, you can go into real estate, uh, you can be you a social media influencer, e-commerce. There are so much opportunities yeah. online to make, a, to make a living, to make money, to, to gain freedom. So if you're not happy with what you're doing right now, you just can't change the situation in yeah. one, one click. Yeah, this, just make another mindset. So mindset is also a very important thing. And I also see, if I see you and some other people that we both know, our mindset is on a whole different level. Yes. And can everyone, everybody change? Everyone, everyone that's willing to change can change. I think it's not always easy. It's not easy, but if it would be easy, everyone would do it. Yeah, also true. <laughs> so course. there's a reason why not everyone is doing it, but you can change. Like you said, information, if you hear different uh, and you receive uh, different information, you will think differently. Yeah. Second of all, you need to be surrounded by different people. You touch that as well. Um, so what I would say if you want to change is, first of all, search someone that has a certain skill set uh, that you want to learn and then uh, change your environment, change the things you hear, you see, don't watch the news anymore, start reading books, start listening to podcasts, start mm -hmm. going out, networking uh, with people that are entrepreneurial, people that uh, want to move forward in life. And I think if you change those uh, things, the same thing like we touched in the beginning, over a certain period of time, things will change, things yeah. will happen. Not, not easy, not fast, but within three, four, five years, a lot of things yeah. can change. People, that's something that I've really noticed. People think that they can change a lot, let's say in one month or two months, but they, they overestimate what they can do, but they really underestimate what they can do in five to 10 years. Yeah. And you know why? Because we are living in a microwavable society. I always say people want to have things fast. If I'm hungry, yeah, I do yeah. delivery. It's delivery. like they want, uh, they just want to win the lottery and don't yes. want to do anything about it. Indeed. We and will. when they have the money, then we, they will start yeah. or when they end in, yeah, in deep shit, then they will start something. Yes, indeed. They want to have it fast, but success and building a completely different lifestyle than that they are having right now, it can't yeah. be fast. It takes time, it takes effort, it takes skills, it takes failure, it takes discipline, it takes consistency, persistency, all those kind of things. So, um, you And also a network. And right? network, yeah. Uh, yeah, and go ping up, up the network because the subject is the power of network and the power behind the network. Okay. Um, when you started, how big was your network? I was doing already uh, sales for a couple of years, so I knew already a lot of people. But let's say now, five, six years later, my network is at least, at least five times that big, at least. Yeah. Um, I have like a personal mentor. And in the beginning of the year, he asked me the question, Robbie, how many, how many people know you? And I asked him, how do you mean know you? And he said, let's say, you say, Robbie Cretens to, to a person, how many people probably do know you? And I gave it a guess. I said 5,000, but probably way more than 5,000 people know who I am. And he gave me like the, the exercise to double it in one year. Because okay. he said, your network is everything. I heard a quote that the difference between a millionaire and a billionaire often is network. Yeah. Because uh, we touched the, the two most important things. Let's say I'm a, a billionaire 
and you take everything away from me nick so i don't have my companies i don't have uh, people anymore i don't have uh, any money any money literally i'm broke as a joke within three to five years probably i will be billionaire again for two reasons you can't take off my network and you can't take what's over here that's the information so information and network can change your total situation yeah. And now also networking, you also started uh, in the last year a new company together with yes. another, another business partner, yeah. uh, Envision. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a really great thing. And can you tell more about it? how it all started for you? Yeah. Because uh, in network marketing, it's more uh, B2C. And that indeed. thing is more B2B. Indeed, indeed. It's business to business. So I've noticed that I was networking a lot. I've noticed that I was... Uh, bringing everyone free network, making publicity. And I really like to do that. But at a certain point I was with my accountant and he told me, Robbie, you need to make a business out of your skills. So then I started thinking and uh, with my business partner, he's very good in graphic design and community building. Mm -hmm. uh, and I really like to network, like to do sales. So I said, this is f per perfect to combine together. And we started with a company that's focused on young entrepreneurs. So people between 20 to 40 years uh, who are self-employed or who are an entrepreneur uh, or having a business. And we try to connect them. Uh, yeah. We do it online and we do it offline through events. Um, so we are now, now starting up with the business. I think we are approximately six months within yeah, the six, business. Six, seven months. Six, seven uh, months. Yeah. And, and we see that now, like the, the business is growing. I'm putting in a lot of effort, connecting people. They're having fun. They received good information and they are surrounded with the good people. So all the things that we discussed, all those subjects are coming back again in, in that vehicle, in that business as well. Yeah, it's, but it is all, all your experiences and all the pain you see, yeah. you combine it and give a solution for it. Indeed, it's really, really a solution for young entrepreneurs. Yeah. So if people listen to this podcast and they are from like the Flemish region and they are self-employed, they always can... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because I always remember that's really if I put a slogan on your grave, uh, uh -huh. your network is your network. Yes, indeed, indeed. And um, if I can give someone a definition for a real network, it is you. Yeah. If yeah. I'm not mistaken, you have networked with over fifty thousand people in the last few years that I know you. Yeah. And um, that's really crazy. You filled conference rooms uh, with everything. Uh, at your last event of Envision, and it's still a startup. Yep. You have over seventy persons, yep. and yeah, it's great. And uh, you get also great entrepreneurs to come to present everything yep. about their skills. Indeed, I think that uh, first of all, I'm very enthusiastic about what I'm doing, and I always say to people like enthusiasm is for free. People yep. notice when you're into when you're enthusiastic about something, they notice, they feel that energy, and they want to plug in on that energy. And I, uh, second of all, I say to people, look, if you come over here, the event will do his, its work because I will bring the right people in the, in the right environment. Yeah. And they noticed when they are coming, if it's now with the network marketing company or if it's now with my other company, if people come, they always ha um, having fun. They uh, connect with new people. They have deep conversations as well. Mm -hmm. And they are enjoying themselves. And because if people uh, enjoying themselves, they have a good feeling. Yeah. And people take mostly emotional decisions, not rational decisions. So if they have good feelings, then they will come back or they do business with you. Yeah, um, and I also remember with almost every event, uh, and re the really offline events, not the online event, but the real offline events where you talk to people, uh, almost at every event of you guys, I got a new opportunity. So I'm now uh, I create a website for some people. Uh, I pitch uh, a business idea out of the blue sky uh okay. just like that uh, from about the wine yeah um starting to talk about the person about it and uh, to go deeper into the conversation about it and i also will start as a cto yeah. for a crypto company mm -hmm. and yeah it's all because that's one small idea of yours that i think that you're the perfect example that what we are doing works yeah so back from the technical issues yes <laughs> Uh, I'm hoping I'm still on the screen. If not, too bad. Uh, no, so to recap uh, where we left off. So I remember at every offline event of Envision, your new company, uh, 
I got on every event a new opportunity, creating websites, uh, creating business ideas for people, and also now starting as a CTO for a crypto company here in Bruges. So Congra a, congratulations on that, Nick. Thanks. Uh, but yeah, it's awesome. And just about that small idea you started, uh, yeah, less than a year ago, and it's a very powerful thing. And now I also know because of that this is because of people that went went to there and brought other people to the events. Mm -hmm. So the power of a network behind your network is also something really valuable. Yes, indeed. First of all, uh, the only thing that I'm doing, Nick, is I'm bringing people or the right people in the room. And you already had a lot of business and a lot of connections through your own actions. So you need to say congratulations yeah. to yourself as well, not only to me. But I try to bring really valuable people, people with big goals, big dreams, and that are willing to work hard. Um, then, of course, it's not, o not always the people or the person that is in the room that can be valuable for you because we have indeed a network after a network. Let's say uh, you gave the example, we had 70 people at our last event, but those 70 people on average know maybe 100 to 150 people. Mm -hmm. So that event, we had an access of 7,000 people yeah. or 10,000 people. Yeah, Crazy. So mostly you don't do business with the person in the room, but that person can recommend you to someone he or she knows. And that's the power of being in a, in a natural community, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it's, you can apply it to everywhere. So like if you start network marketing or you start your own uh, store in fashion mm -hmm. or like me, I've written a book. Um, I, I will ask everyone in that I know them, hey, I've written a book, you want to read it? Yes. Um, even a friend of mine uh, didn't reply to it. Uh, it was from, is everything okay? Uh, did mm -hmm. something wrong? Uh, yeah, it looked like a brief after a pre-made message that oh. you would send to everyone. I said, sorry, but that's not true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe because in the business I'm in, uh, my yeah, my method of talking communication yeah. has changed. So that's also like I wrote my book and I have rewritten it even before mm -hmm. I published it right now. Mm -hmm. So this summer my book comes out, so I'll give you a copy of it. Yeah, I'm going to read it for sure. Um, and yeah, people change also because of it. People change in the matter and the time when they do something. Mm -hmm. They improve and they got other skills. And then for other people that they don't hurt a lot anymore, this one, you changed a lot. Yes, I and I, we had that uh, that conversation. I think a couple of weeks ago, you texted me and I or showed me how you talked with people. And I I said to you that your communication skills were way better than three or four years ago. And that just because you're doing it over and over and over and over and over and over until yeah. it's done. Yeah, I also invest in myself for that. So I follow courses, but you also do that. And yeah. you're also giving course and coaching. Indeed, I think it's really important to invest in yourself. If I can give people one advice is invest in yourself. It's the best investment you can make. So invest in courses, invest in mentorship, invest in books, invest in podcasts, invest in the right people around you, like network communities, those kind yeah. of things. Uh, and me as well, as a person, I like to... Um, coach people as well like people that are not at the level that I'm in yet at this point but people that are willing to go mm -hmm. the extra mile people that are willing to get at the level then I'm always open to help people uh, to coach them to guide them to talk about the things that I've learned mm -hmm. the last decade because yeah. I'm always I'm almost doing this for a, for a decade working with people uh, leadership uh, public speaking sales marketing almost same time like myself so, yes so, yeah. so it's it's been a while it's been a ride i think i saw and heard a lot of things i failed over and over um but it's just by doing it that yeah. your skills of course develop and that's the reason why robbie is robbie uh right now is because all the investments well, i made in myself i will get something out of my backpack because the last sentence i really love that uh I don't know if you know Rivulet. Yes, of course. Well, you can print some text on that uh, bank card. Ah, okay, cool. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's really awesome. Um, first, 
I almost regret the texts of it because uh, you need to have a vision board for yourself and for your goals. Uh, there's also things you teach to the people yeah. and I'm also not teaching to other people's. Okay. Um, and then I want to be chairman of a yeah. network company. Okay. Uh, so happy and grateful that I am. Yes. Uh, but uh, you say, now we talk about failure and yeah, this is the quote that I placed on it. So I'm going to maybe read it. Success yes. is not final. Failure is not fatal. It's the courage to continue that counts. And that's really true. Most people most people quit. I've, I've posted that on my social media earlier today. Like in my door-to-door -door sales job. I've had the mindset. Look, every time someone hits the door to my nose and said to me, no, you can't come in. For me, that was like, Every single no is a step closer to yes. But for yeah. most people, after like 10 or 15 no's, they got discouraged and they quit. Yeah. And I'm always thinking about the quote of, uh, I think it was um, the guy uh, from the from the light bulb. Oh. Uh, uh, Edison. Yeah. Edison always said uh, that he tried over and over and over and over. And people said to him, like, you failed a thousand times. And he said, no, I didn't fail a thousand times. I've just found 10 thousand uh, ways that didn't work out. Yeah. So he did it until he had like the, the correct uh, formula to do it. Yeah. And so I think that you need to go through the failures, go through the struggles, yeah. because if it was that easy, everyone would do it. Yeah. So but, but it is possible for everyone. For you know, everyone, it's possible if you, if you they have... They need to do the work. Yeah, they need to do the work and they need to do all the things that we discussed on the on the yeah. chat and so for a bit for a little bit of advertisements if you are a small entrepreneur here in flanders and you want to get a bigger network with uh, very advanced people contact Robbie Creighton's yes and uh, he'll invite you to the next event would be great and for other people if you are interested to become an entrepreneur to create a lifestyle for yourself where you can choose where you go when you work and they have a really location, uh, location and time freedom. Mm -hmm. You have multiple vehicles. We use network marketing and our own businesses mm -hmm. for that. And you can do with that too. Indeed. And if I maybe I ask you only one thing next is uh, what is the biggest tip you can give to the people that who are watching? Uh, so we talked about a lot of things. So we talked about information, about network, about mentorship. Those are the things that I always recommend and of course investment in yourself. If I need to say something else, maybe I can go over something that we discussed in the beginning is that you need to stay consistent and yeah. not for one month, three months, five months. Everyone can do that, but yeah. just like 5% can say stay consistent for 10 years or 15 years. Yeah, of course. So if you have a dream, if you have a goal, work on that goal and do the DMOs every single day for multiple years. and. Yeah. It's almost impossible that results will show up, not show up. It's almost impossible. If you do it over and over and over and over and over and over and over, results will show up. Yeah. Okay. All right. I want to thank you for this interview. Me as well, uh, Nick. Just uh, with the technical issue. Yeah. So if the guys, you see the camera has moved. It's normal because the camera went down <laughs> for a minute. Uh, but yeah, thank you for everything. Thank and, you, Nick. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe, yeah, we, uh, we will see in the upcoming days uh, each other a lot. Yes. And, uh, let's Thanks make everything for, uh, possible. For, the, for the nice interview. I really enjoyed it. And I wish you a lot of success with the next couple of editions. Uh, and keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, thank you. Ciao, ciao. Cheers. <laughs>